New Horizons is four months old and there are still new players every day and even for someone like myself where I've been playing since day one, I still sometimes find myself lost. There are so many features and bits of information to this game that sometimes it would just be nice to have a list or a website for what you're looking for. So this video is for both new and old Animal Crossing players alike. Here are 20 useful resources to help you with your time playing New Horizons. Some of these things are small but hopefully all will be helpful to you and all of the links will be in the description below so be sure to check them out. To start with, let's talk about the official resource that Nintendo have given us personally, the Nintendo Switch Online Companion app and Nooklink. This app is super useful as it is the only way to get custom design QR codes into your game. But not only that, you can use this for talking to your friends whilst they're visiting your island instead of using the in-game keyboard, which is great if you're like me and you constantly mistap the on-screen keyboard. On the passport section, you can also see how many people have visited your island via the dream address, which is nice. If you've ever seen an image that you thought would look fantastic on your New Horizons island but have no idea how to draw it, then there is no need to panic. AC Patterns has your back. Their design tool allows you to upload an image and it will convert it into an Animal Crossing pattern for you. You can then create the QR code and put it into your game. This pattern tool is also compatible with New Leaf and Happy Home Designer if you ever fancy going back and adding some patterns there. You can also browse through QR codes other people have posted and search for specific patterns. However, if you're looking for something more easily navigated, you can also use AC Patterns Gallery and NookNet. On both of these sites, you can select a specific category to browse as well as search for whatever you like. NookNet also has a town tune creator if you're looking to spice up your town song, where you can browse for a town tune as well as play around with making your own without having to go in game. Turnips are an important part of the game if you want to make a lot of bells quick, ish. So it's very important to make sure you have good turnip prices, but you can't see into the future. Or can you? No. But you can see a prediction of your prices on Storks.io. This site uses data mined information to be able to predict what turnip prices you will have for the week based on the information you input to help you get the maximum profits from your turnip buying endeavours. You are also able to see your friends turnip prices if they input them on the site as well, so if you see your friend may have a big spike coming up, that's your chance to ask really nicely if you can sell them there. Likewise, you can share your prices too. On the topic of turnips, you ever have a week where your turnip prices are awful and your friends don't have much better and then it gets to Saturday and the panic sets in? Well, Turnip Exchange is where you should head. Turnip Exchange allows you to browse people's turnip prices so you can find the best one for it. You can filter out what kind of island you want to visit, so if you don't want to pay the host a fee, you can search for a no-fee island. You can also use Turnip Exchange to find an island who has Celeste and Daisy May on them, people who are hosting for cataloguing only, or if one of their villagers are crafting. Hosting on Turnip Exchange is easy, you can set up how many people you want to allow on your island and then the exchange will set up a queue for you. Only giving people your dodo code once it is their turn so nobody should ever cause the game to error out by coming at the same time as someone else. This is great if you're happy for people to come to your island for the turnip price but you don't want to manually monitor the game because as long as you don't let your switch fall asleep you can do other things whilst the exchange does the work. If you're like me and struggle with designing your island, yes, hello, the island is still trash after four months, don't judge me, then the 3D island planner may be for you. I have already made a video on this if you want to check it out, but the planner allows you to design your island in 3D so you can actually visualise what it will look like when you put it into the game. It's super useful if you want to test what something may look like but you don't want to dedicate the time to creating it in-game in case you have to destroy the whole thing later. If your PC can't run the 3D Island Planner or you are exclusively a phone user, don't panic, there is also the Happy Island Designer. Although this one is only 2D, it does allow you to see your island in a more map-like view so you can see how your layouts look on the map. You can put all the buildings down that you need as well as flowers, trees and more. Also when you first go onto the Happy Island Designer you can pick the exact island you started with rather than having to build the image from scratch. If you're someone who wants specific flowers but don't know where to start with hybrids then here are some very helpful resources for you. First of all is the hybrid visual guide created by Aether, Pale, and Peach and Key. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced any of those. That shows you exactly what flowers you need to make what. All of this information is data mined straight from the game so it should all be accurate. If you're after a more detailed look at the hybrid flower guides then there are three things to look at. First is this google doc that goes into the genetics of the flowers in the game. The second is another google doc that goes through optimal layouts and the third is the google sheet that that goes through all of the data mined information. It's very detailed. Finally, on flower breeding, there is also the flower breeding simulator made by Aeon if you want to play around with flower placement to see what flowers you could end up with. Everything here will be linked in the description below. 
Next up is the mystery tour island guides that Ninji made. This is an overview of the islands you can get when you go on a mystery tour. Unfortunately, since the 1.2 update and the removal of the hybrid island, some of this guide is out of date, such as the percentage of how likely you are to come across a certain island. But I still think it's a good resource because it gives you a general idea of what you can expect to see on some of these islands, so it is still worth checking out. Whilst we're on the topic of mystery tours, if you're looking for a specific villager through this feature, a resource that could be for you is the villager calculator. This site gives you a percentage for how likely it is that you will encounter the villager you're looking for. It doesn't tell you exactly when you will encounter a villager because that's not possible and not how chance works, but it does give you more of an idea of how easy it might be to find them within the Nook Miles tickets you're willing to spare. Another great thing to be able to predict in your game is the weather. Yes, you can watch the TV to be told the weather forecast, but if you want a more accurate forecast for not just the next day, but the week, then Ninji's Meteor Nook is for you. Again, this website uses datamined information to accurately predict your weather patterns. This is great if you're looking for rain to help with your flowers, or you just want to catch the Aurora Borealis. Unfortunately, you can't use this to accurately find out when Celeste will show up, but you can use it to kind of predict when she will. The game will randomly select one of the meteor showers at the start of the week, but Meteor Nook will allow you to see when those meteor showers will be so you can try and catch her. Another useful resource is the Animal Crossing Wiki. This website is filled with information on almost anything you could want to know about Animal Crossing. You want to know about villages in each Animal Crossing game? Go to the wiki. You want to know about a specific feature? Go to the wiki. I use it specifically for their bug, fish and sea creatures lists. I find these are the most accurate. You can look at both hemispheres, see what months they are available in a grid, or go to a specific month to see what is leaving, what's new, and everything available in that month. In general, this wiki is just a great resource for more than just New Horizons. Or it's just some great reading material if you fancy that. This one is a small resource but still helpful, Animal Crossing World's KK Slider Song List. This is a checklist so you can actually tick them off as you go on your road to collecting them all. All of the album artwork is shown as well so if you're like me and can't remember the names of the ones you have requested or bought but can remember the artwork, this is helpful. Speaking of collecting everything, there's a lot of furniture, walls, floors and more in New Horizons and sometimes it's hard to keep track of what you do and don't have, so a checklist is always helpful. This Google Sheet is just that. This sheet has all of the furniture, wallpapers, flooring and everything else in the game including every single colour variant listed. So if you're looking to keep track of what you have collected so far, this is for you. Staying on the collection theme, this little visual by Awen is helpful for knowing what you're getting based on your airport colour. If you didn't know, your airport colour affects the colour of certain items in the Nook Stop. This is simple enough to follow. At the top you have what furniture is tied to which colour airport. Then you have the collections, so if you find you have a yellow lighthouse, these will be the colours of the rest of the items in this set. So you will have a pink drinks machine, black cotton candy stand, etc, etc. The same logic applies to the next set. If you have the green toilet cubicle, you will always get the pastel climbing frame. Then again for the chairs, and the riding horses will be random, but these are all the colours. One mechanic in the game that can sometimes be difficult to get to grips with is friendship. Befriending your villagers to try and get BFF status and their photo can seem like a tiring exercise if you don't know where to begin. UA Crossing on Instagram can help with their friendship handbook, also written by Uralu. This guide goes through the introductions of friendship, how to increase and decrease friendship points, gifts, quests and more. I would just like to also mention that UA Crossing has a ton of visual guides for all sorts of things that you can check out both on their Instagram and also on their website which is currently under construction. Another thing that can be difficult to get right are villager gifts in your quest to get their photo. Every villager has a specific colour and style that they particularly like, but with so much clothing it can be hard to pick. Nook Plaza has a villager gift tool where you can put the name of the villager in and it will pick out clothing for you to then gift them. Don't forget to wrap your presents for bonus points. Another UA Crossing guide that I think is specifically super helpful is the NPC schedule. There were a few changes made when the first summer update was implemented that changed the way NPCs worked. It was to help make sure you were able to see at least everyone once every two weeks rather than not seeing specific visitors for weeks. This visual guide by UA Crossing goes over all of the changes and how the NPCs now work, so you should definitely check it out. 
There are a lot of people out there who have wanted to make rock gardens or place their rocks in specific areas and if you're one of them but don't know where to begin then this guide is for you. This rock guide by Reddit user Tappy goes in depth on how to move your rocks exactly where you want them to go. They show two methods, the water tile method and the mannequin method. Personally I'd go for the mannequin method as it is faster to clean up when you're done. There is also a more visual guide if reading isn't your thing by Anon X Anemone. <laughs> Finally, my last resource for you all is a subreddit. If you didn't know, when trading, selling turnips, etc, some players will ask for something in return, such as an item, an amount of bells, you get the idea, but if you are someone who doesn't like the economy of some of the Animal Crossing community, then this is the place for you. No Fee AC is a subreddit just for people who want to give things away for free. So if you're looking for something in particular, but don't want to pay any fees, then this is a great place to visit as they have a daily looking for thread to help you out. And there you have it, 20 resources to help you with your life on your New Horizons island. I hope this video has been helpful, a like would be appreciated if it has, comment down below any resources you might use that I didn't mention in this video. Subscribe to see more from me, follow my Twitter and Instagram to see what else I get up to, there's also a Discord, links are in the description below, and I'll see you next time, bye!